this, <clears throat> this presentation is about a, uh, an old, old, old method of irrigation uh, that's been popping up uh, in recent years. Um, and it is uh, low tech. Uh, it makes use of the Oya pots that you see here. The traditional Oya pot is the one on the left and uh, uh, they're, they're made out of clay. Uh, the one on the right is one that is handmade, uh, custom made, using clay pots that are now available in a lot of, of different stores. Uh, the water moves in both directions through the clay, uh, which is annoying if you're trying to keep your pots watered outside in the heat of summer because you have to water them all the time because the water is not only evaporating through the soil, up, um, through, up through the soil, but it's also evaporating out through the clay. And uh, this is, it's evaporative cooling. Uh, that's good to keep the roots cool, but it's annoying. Uh, the rate uh, of evaporation is really influenced by the need of the plants. If the plants need a, a lot of that water, the plants are also absorbing the water. Uh, so again, uh, as the plants grow bigger and bigger, it takes more water and so, <clears throat> it's actually better than drip irrigation because it's uh, it is uh, delivering the water at the at the root level. Uh, with drip irrigation, you're basically delivering the water at soil level. Uh, it's ten times better than surface irrigation of any kind, uh, and it's very useful in arid environments. Uh, it is an ancient technology, and it was especially useful in areas with saline soils. Uh, thought to have been originated in North Africa. There's evidence that it was used 4,000 years ago in China. It's still used today uh, in place in India, around Resi. It makes use of local skills because uh, some of the uh, people who live there, one of their skills is making pots. And so they make use of local soil to make the clay and then uh, make the pots that are used by the gardeners. Uh, it's useful for a wide range of plants, and I'll show you that later because we've used it. The water does not need to be uncontaminated. Uh, it works as well with seeds as it does with tran transplants. Uh, the, and as I said, uh, the production of the pots uh, it provides work for other members of the community. We're talking about third world countries and people that are lower on the technology level. Uh, it does preserve the soil structure because there's no interference between the water, there's no compaction of soil. Uh, and as I said, it delivers the water to the plant roots uh, and the plant roots tend to grow toward the pot sides. Um, there was a, a project actually in California in 2019 where uh, six Oya pots were connected with drip line. Uh, and, the, and the person who ran this, which was actually my son, who is a California master gardener, uh, actually um, uh, took care, took a, a recorded, uh, he had uh, two beds. One had Oya pots, uh, the other one was drip irrigation. Uh, and the yields of, there was something problem, there was some problem with the tomatoes that he can't explain, but at any rate, he got incredible um, yield with the Oya pots. Cucumbers were twice as much, melons were a little bit more, uh, herbs like basil and thyme uh, were pretty, pretty equal. But I think you can see that uh, this is, <clears throat> this is a lot of, uh, a lot of production. Uh, this is what the raised beds looked like in California. Sorry, I can't seem to control that. Um, these, this is what the beds look like. You can see the reservoir pot is the tidy cats uh, bucket right here. And then there are six uh, Oya pots that are buried up to the, their level. And these are all uh, connected with uh, tubing, solid tubing. Uh, raised beds are not needed in Northern California, which is where this was done. And so these are not raised beds, but there are raised beds in California. You could easily do it. <clears throat> in the month of July, he, he kept track of the Oya, the uh, water usage, and in the Oya beds, 75 gallons. Um, those pots were about a gallon each 
the reservoir was five gallons. The drip irrigated bed, which had the same, uh, the oil pots were filled using water from the reservoir and the volume used was recorded. The drip emitters were checked for accuracy and the volume used was calculated using the emitter rating and the time the system was run each time. Uh, soil amendments, fertilization, and plant varieties were identical in the two beds. So you can see that's an incredible difference in the amount of water that was used in these two beds. Uh, will it work in Texas? Well, it would be good if it would. So I work at an elementary school. Uh, we had an evil scout who wanted to do a project for the school. And so um, we uh, let him do it. And uh, the linked pots, uh, they're linked for more efficient filling. You could, of course, go out there and fill each pot separately, but that's annoying and it's not much better than just watering the thing by hand. <clears throat> the reservoir bucket was five gallons, the beds were raised, uh, and the homemade pots uh, that we used were two gallon capacity. And this is the pots. Uh, the, the saucer of the pot, these are a little different than the original picture that you saw. The saucer of the pot is glued uh, to the top of the pot uh, and the, the bottom hole is left open and it's, it's reinforced with a metal washer uh, because there's a lot of uh, pulling the tubes in and out of that pot. Uh, at any rate, um, uh, this, this is, we had three beds and so there were four pots per bed. So it was a total of 12 that we need. Uh, the reservoir is connected. Uh, there's a bulkhead uh, or a bulkhead connector here uh, and this then uh, goes to a valve uh, which allows the water to flow into the, through the tubing into the pots. And it's gravity feed so this bucket has to be higher than the, the, uh, than the pots. And this is just the construction of the beds. I mean, most everybody um, knows how you construct a bed, but this is a complete picture. We actually uh, removed the soil underneath. The pots were then set in the, in the, in the uh, bed and connected with the tubing. There are T connectors here, uh, which also go to a short piece of, of tubing that goes down into the pot. Uh, and the beds were way too high, um, higher than we actually wanted. <clears throat> and so we actually put bricks underneath them to get them to the right level. Uh, then, of course, the soil was filled in around the beds uh, and uh, we planted uh, in the fall of 19. Uh, we planted cabbage and you can see that within a, this is a month's growth here. Uh, they did, we, we got some beautiful cabbage out of that bed, <clears throat> as you can see. We also planted lettuce, uh, and these were planted by uh, students, so they're a little hard, a little hard to explain to them that you need to uh, separate the seeds a little bit. This required a lot of, of uh, thinning. Uh, we planted five varieties, they all did great, and they germinated within seven days. We were concerned because since the water is, is evaporating out of the side of the pots, that the surface of the soil is not, uh, is not, and it seems dry all the time, but if you scrape off a quarter of an inch, it's, so, it's uh, moist down below. So this, we were very happy with the, with the lettuce. And we also planted, planted sugar snaps and carrots uh, and, um, they all worked really, really well. The carrots uh, grew more slowly and they seemed to do less well. I'm going to try, we're going to try a few other varieties in there. Uh, the peas were, were great. They, they produced an incredibly good, prolific crop. This is just the beginning, but you can see they're already blooming at this point. <clears throat> in the spring, we planted tomatoes, which did extremely well. We planted peppers. Uh, the gardening, of course, was interrupted by the virus uh, come March, uh, and, uh, but the tomatoes produced well into June. It just Somebody just needed to go over there every once in a while and fill up the pots, and we found that about every four days uh, was what you wanted to do. Um, yes, and in the fall, uh, we planted sweet potatoes, uh, sweet potato slips, 
normally you, uh, you build up the soil and plant the slips at the top of the hill. Uh, in this case, we didn't, couldn't do that because of the pots are in the middle and there was no way to manage that. But you can see uh, that they did extremely well uh, and we also got some pretty good, I don't know why I'm doing that. <clears throat> uh, the fall garden did really well. Uh, the moisture was consistent. Using a moisture meter, I measured to see whether or not the water was getting far enough. Uh, you know, how far is it evaporating? How far does it go out uh, uh, horizontally into the bed? And the moisture was pretty consistent throughout the bed between the pots and toward the edge of the garden. Uh, the interval between filling of pots was three to four days. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, pots, uh, uh, it required about um, four gallons, anywhere from two and a half to four gallons uh, every three to four days to fill the four pots that were there. And as I said, the surface appears dry, but the seeds germinated in the expected time. So that was, that was good. There is another application where you don't have to actually connect them together. If you've only got two pots, uh, in, a, in a garden, uh, it's pretty easy to put a, a funnel in, the, uh, in here. You put, uh, these are actually wine corks uh, because you don't want dirt to go get into the pot. You also don't want um, mosquitoes to be going in there and <clears throat> having a nursery. And so this is a three by eight uh, tank. The tank size is three by eight. Uh, the uh, pots are four feet apart. <clears throat> and the capacity of the of these pots uh, was a half a gallon. This is a smaller bed, uh, so it doesn't require quite as much. This is also at the school, uh, and it's great. And the kids love, you know, they get a cup and they we put a we put a funnel in here and they fill the pots. Uh, works really well. And I grew cucumbers in them with and put a uh, a trellis uh, up there and. Uh, in summer, it was about two days between filling here. And since we met on Tuesday and Friday, uh, and you can actually let it go an extra day, uh, wasn't that bad. Uh, we had herbs in another bed that were doing really well. Jean, can I ask a quick question? Yes. So using the wine corks or something to stop that, is that just to prevent dirt, anything else getting in there? Yeah, I think I meant, did I not mention that? Okay. Uh, yeah. It, you. As I say, you don't want uh, mosquito larva in there, right? Uh, and you certainly don't. Since we're working with children, uh, you don't, you don't, you know. If there was no cork in there, it'd be full of dirt <laughs> very quickly. Uh, so yes, uh, that's that's to keep keep that out. Got it. Um, this is this is in my backyard, and th these were just had just been planted a couple of days before, and we had an incredible rain. We had about eight inches uh, overnight. Uh, and as a result, um, uh, they got pretty badly uh, beat up. However, and I should have taken a more recent picture, uh, but this is a plastic wine barrel, basically. And the only reason uh, there's a fence around it uh, is that I had some kittens <laughs> playing in my backyard and they like to play in the pots. <laughs> so the potting soil, uh, microlife and compost um, made great. And these are four different brassicas. We'll see how they come out. And again, this is a half a gallon or two quart uh, pot. Uh, same thing. There's a pot and then the, uh, the uh, saucer for the pot is glued onto that. Uh, there, I have comparison plants in other gardens in the backyard to see if there's any, any appreciable difference uh, between this situation. Okay, there's a lot of good advantages to this whole system and uh, it delivers water to the root zone and you can't do any better than that. Uh, it reduces water stress on the plant so they aren't wet one day and dry the next. Uh, it reduces labor. Uh, weeds don't do well because the surface is pretty dry and even though <clears throat> the lettuce showed that um, the uh, seeds were germinating finely, uh, fairly well. Uh, it doesn't seem, the weeds just don't seem to do very well and you can you can pull them out of there pretty easily and watering is really easy. It just requires a funnel and 
in a pitcher of water. Uh, it guards against overwatering and underwatering. I mean, because the, the plant is taking what it wants when it needs it. Um, so you, it's never going to be, and you, you almost don't need uh, holes in the bottom of the pot, except when you have a drenching rain. And of course, you want the, drain, you want the drainage to be good. But as far as the, the water that you put in the oyas, they never go anywhere except to the roots of the plant. And it saves water. There's no loss by surface evaporation um, because any water that's, that's on there is being used by the plant. <clears throat> there are disadvantages. Um, the, there's winter, <clears throat> winter breakage because uh, the clay pots are really not, are pretty fragile. Uh, and uh, the pots that you might want are a little difficult to find because uh, you have to find a pot and a saucer that fits so that you can glue that on. And I've used, um, I've used silicone glue. I've also used some of the caulk that you use in the bathroom uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, reduced uh, porosity, um, we're figuring, uh, and there, there are people who have done a little more work on this than I have, uh, that, that the, the porosity reduces uh, if uh, some of the um, contaminants that might be in the water uh, plug up the, uh, the pots and reduces its porosity. So in about five years, there, might, there could be a problem with reducing porosity. I think you would notice that pretty quickly if you were checking on the moisture in your bed. Uh, there's no data at, at all on what the best shape might be for an Oya or what the volume should be or that sort of thing. We do know, however, that it is possible to buy a clay pot that does not evaporate water uh, because that happened to me. Um, I bought pots that were made in Italy uh, and I bought them because they were very attractive. They were a, a, a lighter clay color, a lighter uh, terracotta and uh, didn't notice that uh, on the bottom of the pot that they were made uh, in Italy and they were called water, uh, water retentive or something like that. Uh, and it simply means that these pots were fired uh, at a higher temperature and that actually dehydrated the clay so that their, the porosity is gone. Uh, I tried it. I bought some, uh, and, but I always check them for leakage uh, before installing them in the garden. And I found that if I filled it with water, nothing came out. That Every bit of water that I put in there, there was nothing come out of the sides. If you put water in a, in a plain old clay pot that you put your plants in, you'll notice that very quickly after you've watered, the outside of the pot is wet. So, um, but this was that. So I'm just saying that because there are clay pots that do not evaporate water. I'm given some references here. Uh, the data and photographs for the California project were actually done by my son, who is a California. Uh, so I'm giving him credit here for the data and the photographs. Spelled wrong, unfortunately. Uh, but there is some information out there about uh, the moisture and the evaporation uh, from plant containers. They did a whole a whole series of that. And there's a lot of information on the internet about play, clay pot irrigation. If you just Google Oya, you, it comes up with quite a bit of stuff. And some people have come up with actually automatic systems uh, so that you have a floater in your reservoir that uh, senses when the valve needs to be opened. And that's fine. It's just that we didn't feel that we needed to have anything quite that exotic. And at the bottom here is my, uh, my contact information. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. And uh, I think that's the end of the program. And I think Great. that uh, we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that may have come up in the meantime. Thank you so much, Jean. Um, again, this is Jean Pfeffer, Harris County Master Gardener, long-term member of the Urban Harvest Community Gardens Committee, 25 years, and really appreciative of your time, Jean. My apologies for those who were trying to join on Facebook. I could not live stream. I tried it six different times, <laughs> um, and I've never had that issue before. So um, we are recording, and so this recording will be posted on our Facebook page and also on YouTube.
So anyone who is here in webinar, if you have a question, feel free to post it in the chat. Otherwise, when I post this video, Jean, I will see if folks have questions and then perhaps we do a part two. We also are interested either way in doing a part two of actually setting up and building um, the OYA system in one of our raised beds at the Urban Harvest Teaching Garden in the East End. And so stay tuned for that um, so that we can have a, another discussion and folks can have another opportunity to join to learn more. Jean, of course, you're welcome in the garden. Um, and if you can't be there, we'll make sure that we take notes from this presentation and call you with any questions. <clears throat> I'd be happy to participate. Um, Wonderful. It's not that hard to get out anymore if you're careful. <laughs> yes, exactly. Being outdoors, especially as the weather is nicer. And I'm, I'm sorry there was a problem uh, getting it online. Not your fault. My apologies to all of our, um, you know, fans on Facebook who were looking forward to watching and, and finding that Facebook broadcast. But apologies. Um, not much I could have done, unfortunately, but I tried my best and uh, well, this will be posted here shortly. So Jean, okay. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much. And thank you for your time and look forward to hearing folks' questions and um, setting up the Oya clay pots at the Urban Harvest Teaching Garden very soon. Okay, you just need to go shopping for pots. Yes, and you'll send us a list of materials. Actually, do you have that available like that I could make a PDF to post, Jean? Um, I can send it to you. Okay, uh, great. So um, when we have that available, I will make sure I post um, the list of materials and maybe just a general cost breakdown just to s folks who are interested. Obviously, the idea is that it's low tech and also pretty affordable, Gene, right? Yes. Well, for, for one of the bids that I showed you in the program yeah. with the four pods, it's about $70 to set $70, it up. $70, perfect. Okay. Right. And Yes. Going to stop sharing and uh, say goodbye and thank the two or three people that were here. <laughs> yes, appreciate it. And we'll look forward to our next session. Take care, Dean. Okay. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.